everyone, my name is Sinead, welcome back to my video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about how I got a 7 in IB Chemistry. Literally everything I did, step by step, how to guide as to what exactly I did to get a 7. <laughs> This video is just gonna be about the exams. I'm gonna make a video later about how to do the IA and stuff like that. But for this video, all it's gonna be about is exam. This is essentially the video I wish I had before I started doing IB Chem. But on that note, I'd just like to say this is only what works for me. You've gotta figure out what you need to do to get a seven. So take what you want from this video, take the tips that you want and just leave the rest. Okay, so my first point is this, come here. Okay, so. Literally the most important thing that you can do is do a lot of past papers. Everyone says that a million times, but it is literally the most important thing. Everything that you do that isn't working through past papers should be doing stuff to help prepare you for doing past papers. Okay, so how I say it is this. There's two stages of doing IB Chem. First, there's the stage where you're just going through school, trying to learn the content, trying to really understand Chem, trying to get down those basic fundamentals of chemistry, going topic by topic, one by one. Then, the second stage is just you bashing through past papers like a madman. And the faster that you can get to the stage where you're bashing through past papers, the better. You can't cheat your way there, you can't skip understanding, but you also don't wanna like, you know, two days before the test this is the first day you do your first uh, practice paper. Like, don't, that's not gonna work well. Might work if you're a genius or something, but most people, like, let's admit it, we're not that naturally smart. We're just like average kids and we gotta work hard to do stuff and that's fine. That being said, Let's go through how to learn content for Ivy Chem. Let's talk about that first stage where you're trying to understand this content and figure out what the hell is going on with all this chemistry nonsense. And also I have a lot of empathy for kids who have shitty classes because literally in my first year, literally didn't learn shit from my classes. Learned fuck all from my teachers. Literally had to spend the entire first year trying to figure out everything on the internet. So that's kind of like where I'm coming from. In second year, I did get a better teacher, but for the most part, when it came to Ivy Chem, I relied so heavily on just the internet to teach me what to do. So. Okay, let's get back to talking about the first stage. So in the first stage, you're essentially trying to wrap your head around and really understand the concepts of IB chemistry. You can't rely on memorization. It's just not gonna work. Watch these videos on my study fundamental series. Just short term memory isn't gonna work. You gotta understand that shit. You gotta like form a mental model for it in your head. And it's not that complicated either. Like trying to learn to understand this stuff. It just takes time and effort. What I would do if I was like studying a topic, like let's say like atomic chemistry or whatever, fucking like periodicity, I don't care. What I would do is that I would watch lots of videos about it. That's how my brain works. I like watching videos. I would read the textbook. I would read through the text, go through the study guide, do a bunch of random Google searches just based off questions I had about the content that I didn't get and try and engage in active recall to help get my brain around to understanding the content. I really like learning from video. So I learned so much from the YouTubers, Richard Thornley, MSJ Cam, and Andrew Wang. They are absolutely amazing and saved my life in IB Chem. They have really good channels, which make videos that are super specific to the IB Chem syllabus. I would use the Pearson's textbook if I felt like reading for some reason. And if I felt like that wasn't enough, I would just Google search random YouTube videos that would help me like understand the concepts. I would always have the syllabus beside me so that I knew what I needed to know and make sure I wasn't going off tangent. And I use all of these resources in different proportions, but mainly I focus on trying to study and understand Richard Thornley's content. Essentially what I would do is I would try to consume this content and then engage in active recall around the content to engage my brain. I would just continuously ask myself questions about the material. Like I would do my own like visualizations of concepts to help like get my head wrapped around it. If I was watching a video I would like pause the video at the end of the video or in the middle or whatever and like write down everything that I can remember because that's like active recall that's engaging your brain in it. I would always do the practice problems because those just like help get your brain into the content. Whenever I was studying for a practice test, I would do like heaps and heaps of like topic past paper questions to like just to get that active recall in me. I found a few websites which had question banks just for particular I chem topics so they would organize like all of the periodic table questions in one place so I use those extensively. I'm gonna leave all of those linked in the description below so that you can also use those topical past paper question banks to your advantage. And so yeah on one quick note I would really recommend that like before you go into past paper mode 
really do actually spend time with content, with the material, trying to understand it. Because if you go straight to past paper mode without trying to get your head around the concepts and content, you might end up just trying to memorize the mark scheme and taking shortcuts, which is not what you want to do. Always good to try and understand stuff before you do the questions. I mean, you can mix them both. Like, it doesn't have to be that binary, but it's about mixing theory with practice. Like, practice is like doing the practice papers. Theory is about reading and trying to understand. You can't only read and understand, but then you can't only do past papers. You have to mix them both in perpetuity. One other tip that I would say is that whilst you're doing IB chemistry, understand that it's going to be hard at the start, but eventually it's going to get easier. I think a lot of kids struggle with like the language of chemistry because chemistry does feel like a whole new language you're learning. Like there's so many new words, new ways of saying things that you may not be familiar with. And in general, I feel like a good attitude to have towards it is that you shouldn't fear too much the language of IB chemistry at the start. Over time, as you continue to engage yourself in the material, eventually it will make sense. But there are some things that I did to help me get more familiar with the language and words. So here are three things I did to get myself more familiar with the language of chemistry. And by language of chemistry, I just mean the way chemists talk about things and the way chemists describe shit. Like every field has its own like language and way of communicating with other people in its field. And learning chemistry is a lot about like just trying to figure out like what chemists are talking about when they're talking about their work in theory. So firstly, one thing that I did before I started IB, this is completely random, but I learned the periodic table song for my high school. The periodic table song is essentially a song that just lists off all the elements. It goes like there's antimony, oxygen, aluminum, selenium, and hydrogen, and oxygen, and nitrogen, uranium, and nickel, neodymium, neptunium, uranium. It's a song that basically just lists off all of the elements. Like it's a bit far-fetched, it's a bit weird. When I saw an element name like europium, I didn't stress out about it because that's a weird word. I just knew, oh yeah, that's one of the elements because I know all, what all of the elements names are based off like just knowing the periodic table song. It's hard to explain how this helps, but I I think this just gives you a boost of confidence because you have a lot of the language of chemistry as in knowing all of the elements in your head already so when you come across weird words like uranium and europium and all of these names of elements that you don't necessarily have to know but it's like good to know you're not like scared about it you just know like that's an element if you're gonna pick one song to learn i would recommend learning the asap science song because that actually gives you the elements in order which is like so much better than like the random one where they're all like grouped together randomly. You're just gonna have to trust me that it, it helps somehow. It's not a substitute to studying for the exams, but I feel like it can give you some confidence and help you like just get more familiar with the language of IB Chem. Secondly, I didn't do this as much because I was a bit lazy, but I did do flashcards to help memorize key definitions and words. I wouldn't make them because I'm like lazy, so I just go on Quizlet, look up uh, periodic table definitions or whatever, or I don't know, organic chem definitions or whatever, and I would just like try to go through those every now and then to just get that vocab in my head. Thirdly, and this was so helpful, I would recommend anyone to do this. Basically, on my iPad, I have this journal called Polyatomic Ions to Know. And you don't have to do this on an iPad if you have, you can do this on pieces of paper, but if you have an iPad, it makes things more fun. Essentially, what I did is that, you know, you hear about all these compounds like sulfate and phosphate and chromion ions or whatever, and it kind of becomes like a bit much, like what, it, what the hell are all these things? Like you have to know your polyatomic ions. You have to know about sulfate and phosphate because like they just come up on the exam so much it's really helpful to know them. And I would always be stressed out about them because I was like, oh my god, what's the equation? What's ammonium versus nitrate versus nitrite? Like what the hell are all these things? They all sound the same, but then they're all fucking different. Like nitrate, nitrite, ammonium, and ammonia. Like you just gotta stop crying about it and get to work. But essentially what I would do, but essentially what I would do is I would create these little information pages about all of the polyatomic polyatomic ions that kept coming up and that it seemed like I needed to know them. Nitrite, nitrate, ammonium, and phosphate. And for me, drawing these diagrams like this really helps me because I'm like super visual learner. I like, I like having a diagram image in my head. Like the dichromate ion, which comes up a bunch. I like drew a diagram of what it looked like. And this, I feel like really helps because this comes up a lot in organic chemistry. And so just having like an idea and like a little information page, which I can kind of visualize in my head in an exam. I just feel like it really helped. There's so many molecules and elements and stuff. It can get a bit stressful, but if you can just like over time, whilst you're going through the IB Chem, just write down molecules, just collect like a booklet, any like like key molecules or polyatomic ions that you need to know, I feel like that was very beneficial for me. And that's pretty much all I did in the first stage of trying to understand IV Chem. And so as you can see, I actually never really made any notes whilst in this understanding stage. Like I would use paper to scribble on diagrams and write random shit. 
I'm just too lazy to make notes. Instead, what I would do is I would just rely on study guides to provide me with that like quick summary of information. Okay, so we're changing it up a bit for lighting purposes, but anyway, on that point about notes. It was really only when I started to bash through past papers that I started to make notes. So once we were done with stage two, once I had, okay, so once I was done with stage one and that being understanding and learning like the broad overview. And so yeah, once I finished the first stage where I had developed a broad brushstroke overview of all of the concepts in IB chemistry and I had done like topical past papers for each of the topics that we have to study, that's when I moved into stage two, which is the past paper annihilation stage. This stage is the most important and it builds off stage one. In this stage, we've already covered all the topics. We don't know all of the topics super well. Some of them we know better than others. We know organic chem a little bit more than peer Periodicity because we did that a while ago, but nevertheless we've somewhat covered all of the topic And so we're ready to actually like attempt doing the past papers And so what I did is I essentially created a system for myself that allowed me to effectively bash through past papers When you start doing past papers, you're gonna get like 30% like I'm not even kidding Like don't be scared because the past papers are so hard. You just have to like keep doing them Don't be disheartened. Don't be like, oh no, I got 30% I'm never gonna get better. Everyone starts off when you're first doing past papers, like not knowing what half of the questions are even trying to say. That's the point of like bashing through past papers. Because eventually as you do them over and over and over and over again, you eventually kind of like figure out what the hell the IB exams are talking about when they ask you weird ass chemistry questions. You can figure out how to do it with paper and pen if you want, but I feel like boy did this thing change the game for me because it just helped me be so freaking efficient and organized with my past papers. Like you can do the same shit with paper, but if you can like afford one of these and you have like an Apple Pencil, this shit is game changer because it made it so easy for me to do past papers. And this thing was relatively cheap. Uh, this was only $329. And now I think there's a new one out, so this one should be even more cheap. So let's talk about what I actually did. You know, everyone asked me, when did you start studying? Start studying as early as possible. So on my iPad, I have three folders. So on my iPad, I have four folders dedicated to IB chemistry. I have a folder for paper one, paper two, paper three, and then some random stuff. In each of the past paper folders is where I've compiled all of the past papers in that folder. This took like a full day to organize and download and stuff, but it is completely worth it. Never look back, like 100%, spend a lot of time trying to develop the system. Because it meant that like later on, I didn't have to be like, oh my God, where's the 2017 May pass paper? If I wanted to do that paper, I could just do it. Then in each pass paper folder, I had this book, which was really helpful, where I would track my progress on how I was going with all of the pass papers. One thing to note before you're doing past papers is that every year there's three past papers, except for 2020, but uh, anyways. So essentially for every three years, there's a May times a one paper, May times a two paper, and then a November paper. So I would just like label it as such. Then this thing over here, then this bar thing over here is where I color in how much I've gone through the past paper. This is a bit unnecessary, but I find it a bit appealing and like oddly satisfying to have like just done a past paper and just like, you know, color it all in. It's just like very satisfying. So as you can see here, I had the year on one side. Then on the right, I have questions I was confused about. So in this section is where I just write down any of the questions where I fucked up on. And the reason why I set this up is because this puts the North Star in mind. This makes it very clear what I'm trying to do. The goal is to have collected a bunch of questions I was confused about, try to understand them, and to have colored in as much of these bars as possible. That's the essential goal. Once I've colored in as many bars as possible and I can understand all the past papers, I should be good for the exam. I have this for paper one, two, and three. Then I also have a few other things in this book. So I have one page where I just have this note called need to revise, write down random stuff that I was shit at and I needed to revise again. Then I would have this page called to remember where I would essentially write down any like really specific key facts that I kept forgetting. I wouldn't write paragraphs, I would just write like Lewis bases are bases that accept a proton or whatever, I can't even remember. Then here is also where I would screenshot questions that I didn't know and I was really, really confused about 
seatbelt. Like I was like, what the fuck is going on here? And then rather than spending like too long trying to figure out what the question was, I would save them here so that I could ask my teacher later on. Like I would just screenshot the question and then paste them here. So for example, thermodynamics, here are a bunch of questions. You can just see that like I'm trying to make a detailed solution and write any notes on the question because like I really wanted to understand it and I didn't want to fuck up on it again. Like for example, I would draw diagrams like this one to like help wrap my head around it more. And because like I didn't get it the first time, I really wanted to make sure I would get it the second time. And then what I would do in paper two is that for any definitions that I came across, I would save them and put them in this form. Folder. and I would organize them based off their topic because in paper 2 there's lots of definitions and things you need to know that where it's just stuff you just need to memorize the mark scheme for so you can spit it back out onto the exam paper. If I was doing past papers right and I came across a question like describe the emission spectrum of hydrogen I would be like okay that's clearly something they want me to memorize so I'm gonna circle it copy it and then paste it into here. So I would paste all the definition questions on one page and then on the other page I would paste the mark scheme answers. As you can see I just collected all of these past paper questions where it's just straight up memory stuff and I would have the answers on the other side and then I would use this as like just a form of active recall and like space repetition where over time I would just go through here go through all the questions write down my answer see what the answer was on the other side and then check whether I was right or not whenever I would do them I would write my score on the top so for example as you can see here um, zero out of two that means the last time I did it I didn't know what the answer was one out of two means I only could get one of the marks and so my goal was to collect as much of these memory things as possible and so over time all of these would go to two out of two full mark because that meant I would have memorized them. I hope that makes sense. I'm gonna leave the link to this PDF in the description box below. Then I also had my chem notes folder. In my chem notes folder I just had some essentials so I had the chem data booklet. I would write a bunch of notes on it. I would just go through the chem data booklet because you really got to get familiar with this baby because he's gonna be your best friend in paper two. Then I have the chem syllabus. You gotta have your syllabus by you because you don't want to be like freaking memorizing some shit you don't need to know. And so what I did before I started doing past paper is that I got the syllabus, I put it into my iPad, and then I went through it and I would tick with the blue all of the things that I did understand. And then everything I didn't understand, I would put a little circle next to it to indicate that it is a hole in my knowledge and that I need to fill that hole. So before I was doing my exams, I had like a picture overview, all of the concepts that I already knew and all of the concepts that I still needed to fill so that eventually hopefully before the exam comes around all of these holes are filled then of course i've got my book on polyatomic ions to know but then this is another important file that i have so i have this file called chem notes chem notes is essentially where i would write down all of my notes whilst i was doing past papers look i'm not a genius i don't get shit at first glance i have to work at it i have to like actually put in energy and time to figure out stuff so pretty much whenever I came around to a topic which I was confused about or a topic that I was repetitively struggling with, that's when I would make my notes. Because usually the reason why I'm confused about a topic is because I don't really like click with the way that the study guide is trying to present the concept. And so in order to get my head around the content and actually understand it, I'll just read about the concept from a bunch of different sources. And then from there, try to make my own like little reference that I can use just through writing things out in like a style that makes sense to me and drawing diagrams that I can actually understand. And and this helps with two things. One, it helps me wrap my head around the concept that I'm struggling with. And two, if I find myself struggling with again, which usually I am, I can just come back to it and see what I wrote in my notes. For general notes and like simple stuff that like you don't need to write down yourself, I would just solely rely on the study guide or based off notes I found online. And so the only real notes I'm making are notes on shit that I actually am really confused about and I'm really struggling with. Thus, my notebook with all of my chem notes is just filled with only things that I struggle with and only things that like I get confused about. I think it's cool. A lot of kids who like they try really hard, they put in a lot of effort, they struggle with like their note taking system because they take heaps and heaps and heaps of notes but it's all stuff that they don't actually need notes for. Like they end up with books and books of notes where in reality they already know like most of what is written in the notebook and because they've made so many notes it's really hard to like you know find the information that you're looking for. Like I don't need a note to explain periodic trends because that's already really obvious and intuitive for me. It's just in my head. I don't need a note to like help me with that. But then writing down the rules for like balancing chemical equations can be really helpful because that's gonna act as something that you're gonna constantly refer to. That's why I make my notes. That's why I make my notes after and whilst I'm doing past papers. Because if you make your notes based off the textbook, the textbook has lots of random shit that you don't need to know. If you make your notes based off doing past papers and you make your notes based off topics that you are struggling with, then you end 
end up with this really incredible resource where you just have like a really good reference guide to things that you actually are weak at. In summary, I don't make any notes about like obvious stuff, but instead I made notes solely based off topics that I struggled with. Specifically based off past papers, not the textbook. And yeah, that's a summary of how I studied for IPCAM, how I got a 7. If you can find your own way to create a system where you can bash through past papers like a madman and really strive to like understand IBCAM, then I can guarantee you, you're gonna do well. And so yeah, that's essentially how I studied for IB Chemistry. That's how I got a seven in my exam. If you have literally any questions whatsoever, you can DM me on Instagram. I respond to every single DM I get. And all of my notes and resources are gonna be available in the description box below so you can check those out. They're not perfect, obviously. There's mistakes or whatever in them. I just really hope someone finds it useful. And if you do, please just leave me a comment. And yeah, that's all I have for this video. Bye! <laughs>